most of my research for this interview consisted of listening repeatedly to your albums, and they're really amazing pieces of art, in my opinion. Uh, do you listen to God Module much, other than for, per for preparing for the tracks that you're doing live, and what are you listening to these days, besides God Module? Uh, that's the ego question there. Yeah, well, I would never put out a CD that I didn't think I liked enough to listen to. That's what I've always said since the beginning. You know, it's the only reason I started making music was I wanted to make something that I liked a lot. And if I don't like it, then I would never release it. And that's so I do listen to it from time to time and I do get tired of it, obviously, because it's the same old thing. So I get really happy when there's a new CD out like now. And I wish that we could like just play the whole thing through. But of course, that's the most awful thing on earth to go to shows. I mean, I've done it my whole life too. You know, you wait forever to see this band and then they play a bunch of shit you've never heard and you're just like, fuck you, you know? <laughs> so, well, at least at this point, Seance has been out and it gives those fans a little time to get used to it. Yeah, and we'll be playing a little bit less than half new stuff tonight and so it should be okay. But um, what do I listen to now? That's a really scary question. Uh, I've become really this. I don't know. I won't go into it too much. <laughs> I don't listen to a lot of industrial stuff. Um, okay. I listen to um, um, I listen to some kind of hipster shit like Yeah Yeah Yeahs. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Yeah Yeah Yeahs. Um, I love, like I said earlier, Tiger Army. I even like the new Nick 13 Country Weird CD, which is totally going to ruin my whole image here, probably. <laughs> but I mean, I, I just think he's awesome. Um, I, I love AFI, and I love the last Black Audio CD, and the new stuff they put online is fucking awesome. Just crazy. Davey's ridiculously talented, man. And um, I still listen to some bands. I mean, I still have my roots still. I still listen to Hosiko whenever they put anything new stuff out. And I, Other than that, though, it's like really random what I listen to these days. And, of course, the same old thing. I still am a big horror punk fan and listen to Danzig and even though I don't like the new album, but I still like Danzig. And I'm really excited because I'm going to see Danzig on Halloween in L.A., which he's doing like a, uh, it's kind of like my dream come true kind of thing, other than the fact that he's like 60 or whatever now. But it's still, it's like he's doing like a legacy show where they're playing like an hour Sam Hain set, an hour Misfits set, and an hour Danzig set. So I actually get to see the Misfits on Halloween. And I think of Danzig as the Misfits, not fucking Jerry only and his Christian bullshit. So, yeah. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Awesome. It's awesome to hear. Uh, what inspired you to use references to Jeff John's comic Blackest Night? Are you a comic book fan? And if so, what do you read on a regular basis? I read more um, stuff that comes out like Dark Horse, um, BPRD, and Mike Mignola stuff, um, all the Hellboy stuff. I'm a huge Buffy fan too. So, <laughs> Buffy, Angel, all the other stuff on IDW that was coming out before. But um, I do every once in a while read, you know, DC stuff. I'm not a huge Marvel fan, which probably makes people mad sometimes. I like Batman. I like. I I didn't really like um, a lot of. I think the whole zombie thing sometimes gets a little old, you know. I mean, just because it's so overdone in movies, comics, it seems like it's like everybody has to have. Now it's like it's got to be like you know Marvel zombies, or and it's so easy and so cliche. But um, I I never really loved. I mean, I always liked the Green Lantern comics. Never really was like my favorite thing. I'm, I'm more Batman, Superman for that kind of normal comic stuff. But um, my friend Andrew, um, he buys like comics like crazy. He's a psycho. And so um, I read The Blackest Night and I ended up really, really liking it a lot. And I love the whole Black Hand storyline. And it's just became some weird thing and when I first read the Black Lantern Oath I was like I totally have to do this and I thought it was a good idea but I'll go ahead and give props out and my friend Andrew told me when he first got it he's like you need to read this and you should put this in a song and he was kind of joking I think and then <laughs> Rituals um, was done other than the part that had that in there and I was like well we've got to come up with something else and I wanted Clint to do some vocals in it and then I was just sitting there and I was like this works completely perfect with the premise of the song the idea of it plus it'll sound cool when he's saying it so and we were kind of worried at first you know like oh, are people gonna think it's too dorky you know but then again though if you listen to seance it's pretty dorky cd i mean uh remember as a, a sample from thundercats from a a thing called Robear Bill, who is like this robot bear. And it's really strange, and you might not know that normally, but yeah, but then there's 
references to um, Cthulhu and Dagon, Lovecraft stuff, and a lot of comic book stuff. So it all fit together, and I think it worked out pretty good. I do too. Um, uh, do you have any plans to re-release any of your earlier albums, like Artificial and Empath? Well, we do. Right now, I just finished reworking a new release for Victim Among Friends because that's was only out in Europe and never got released over here because it was right at the time where we switched over to Metropolis and it kind of got lost in the mix. So it's been out of print for like four years. And I um, completely redid the vocals and the music to The Ones We Love. And Clint has been singing Image live. And um, so we went and did a version with him doing the vocals on that. So instead of going and doing like the thing we talked about earlier with getting people to remix it to make it something different, I just remixed it all myself. And um, that's coming out. Also, I went in and changed a lot of the stuff on Let's Go Dark because Byron's not in the band anymore. And that was the only album he ever sung on was some um, Spooky and Orange and Black. So I redid the music for both of those and I did the vocals for it. And we're releasing that as, um, it'll probably be online soon, but right now it's like gonna be, we had to do a separate CD just for the goth crews. So it's kind of like a exclusive thing for them to start off with, but then slightly different versions will be available soon for sure. And we would love to get Empath back out because that's been for so long gone and it's one of my favorite CDs. So hopefully maybe Metropolis will do some kind of re-release thing. I'd love to go back in and like just completely actually work on the production side of it a little bit better, I think. So it's something I would really like to do. So hopefully, I wouldn't want to release it the way it is now, but if we could make it better, yeah, I'd be totally down for it. Clean it up a little bit. Exactly, yeah. What made you decide to do a Ouija uh, board box set for Seance? Ouija, sorry. <laughs> no, that's the other thing too. Everybody keeps doing that to me all the time too. <laughs> like, that's a sample, you know? It's not me telling you how to say Ouija board, because I say Ouija too. So, but everybody comes up to me, it's like, hey, will you sign my Ouija board? And then they're like, oh, I mean, Ouija. Like, they're real scared I'm going to yell at them. And I'm like, you know, that's just a sample from some weird old movie with Tawny Katane in it. It's not me. But yeah, but um, the whole thing that came about, we were uh, just talking of ways to do something different because we see so many people doing box sets now. And it's a great thing because a lot of people don't buy CDs these days. So if you do a little something extra, it gives people a reason to do it. But then at the same time, people who put out, you know, just just a t-shirt or just something extra in there. It seems kind of like, kind of lame, you know, because you could get all that stuff normally. So we were trying to come up with something totally different. And um, when the idea came around to call the CD Seance, before the song Ouija was actually Ouija, now I'm doing it too. <laughs> but before that was actually written, um, Clint and Courtney and I were sitting in an airport, I think in Austin, and we were just like, why don't we just make a fucking Ouija board, you know? And Little did we know how hard that was going to be, because <laughs> like we could have easily made like a sticker and put it on something, but when you actually go and try to get like somebody to make a game board for you, it's really fucking annoying. But it turned out really cool. And then um, for the planchettes, uh, Clint actually carved one out of wood. And then um, one of his friends works in a prop house in LA, so he like did like a resin mold of it and made like 20 of them. But then the sad part was he didn't have time to do it anymore, so Clint had to like set at his house and pour the resin and make each one and luckily there was only a hundred of them but then he had to like go in and like take a dremel and get everything out of it so each one even though it might look a little like, i guess they're supposed to you know, supposed to be nice and say you know they're one of a kind yeah right so they are one of a kind they are yeah they are hand carved somewhat yeah but yeah that was the whole thing and i just thought it would be a cool thing to have and i have like some other I've been collecting Ouija boards for a while. Like I have a couple old weird Parker Brothers ones, of course, but then like I have the Mike Mignola Ouija board and the Buffy one that came out and one by an artist from LA called Eric P. Gores. And so I always thought it was cool when I would see him places, I'd always grab them. So I was like, I'd like to have my own fucking Ouija board. <laughs> so, so that was really the main reason why. And it seems it went over really well and people seemed to, I hope people realize that it was something we basically did just to give them something that wasn't the same old bullshit, you know. So yeah, I hope in this it's day and age of digital only, it is good to have collector's items. Yeah, and we definitely did everything in there ourselves, you know. Like, we didn't even get the boxes done. We sat there, I sat there for hours putting everything together personally, so I, I think it turned out pretty good. Now just, the thing is to come up with something that'll beat it when we come up with the next CD, right. which I don't know what it'll be, but that's something we'll see. 
Maybe a severed head or something. You never know. You never know. We were talking about action figures the other day, so you never know. Cool. That might be lame, but it might be cool for me. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot for the interview, and I look forward to seeing you. Go see God Module, Imperative Reaction, the Triptych Tour, Sense System Sense. Just go online. You can find all that information in coma-online.com. Thanks for the interview. Thank you.